Hello. Hello. Okay. So, hello everyone. I'm gonna give a brief introduction to our project. So let's first take a look at the first satellite image on the screen. So in the image, you can see on the top part of the image there are some straps. Uh, actually, those straps are uh, repre uh, representing uh, the oil palm plantation. So our goal is to train a, a convolutional neural networks uh, model to which takes input of a satellite image and outputs a prediction how likely the image um, contains uh, the oil palm plantation. So our data set consists of about 15,000 satellite images. Uh, and uh, each image is labeled as one or zero uh, to indicating if the image contains um, oil palm plantation. Uh, so one of the issues our data set has is class imbalance. Uh, um, out of the 15,000 uh, labeled images, we only have 66% 6 of the image uh, which contain uh, oil palm plantation. So to address this issue, we implement image uh, augmentation to generate synthet uh, synthet synthetic uh, images. So we apply several uh, image translations to our original data set. So you can see the second uh, image on the screen. Uh, it is uh, the second image comes from uh, the horizontally flip of the original one, and the third image comes from the increasing saturation of the first one. Uh, image aug uh, image augmentation uh, makes the data set to be more uh, representative of many different positions, angles, and the lightings. So and thus to improve our model's ability to generalize and correctly label the images. So next, I will give a brief overview of the models we consider to use. The first one I'm going to introduce is the ResNet, which is probably the most groundbreaking one in the last few years. So basically, the idea is that like through the use of identity um, skip connections, so you can see the shortcut um, on a graph. So it is it is possible to allow us to construct a, mo a much deeper and much stronger network. And based on that, we also found another paper, which is the which is about the squeeze and excitation rust, uh, squeeze and excitation network. So the idea is that it has two phases. So the for during the squeeze phase, it used global average pooling to generate channel-wise responses. And during the excitation phase, so it maps the input just aggregating the previous phase and map that input to a set of channel-specific weights. So these are the two stages. And after this, we just re rescale the transformation input to get our final input um, of this SE block. So finally, um, as you can see um, on the right side, so we apply the SE block onto the ResNet to see if we can get a better performance. So as we can see, um, beautiful thing about the residual block and the squeeze and excitation block is that it's an add-on. It can be applied to other existing structures to enhance the performance with the right configuration. Unfortunately, you're out of time. I'm sorry. Yeah. 